Alright, hello, my name is Sondre, and I have been lucky enough to be able to get on this show, or this channel. Uh, I am from Norway, so I am not a native English speaker. I don't think it will bring up much problems, but uh, I'll just give a heads up that my English is you know, probably going to suck quite a bit. Uh, I said I'm from Norway. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, you know anarchists or voluntarists yeah, in Norway, but um, you know there's some like me, for example. And uh, uh, my friend here, who's going to sit in the background, named Oscar. Uh, yeah, he's not going to bother us anymore, so it's cool. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, uh, my family is a you know, typical Norwegian middle class family. Uh, my mother is a very active social democrat, uh, earlier socialist. So I grew up in a socialist uh, you know, household as a kid. Went to the you know, Labor Day marches and shit like that, and uh, was affected by those types of uh, political. Uh, you know, ideas. Uh, as I grew up, I uh, became more ideologically aware and uh, moved away from you know social democracy to uh, more uh, what can I say uh, economically liberal ideas while still being sort of conservative on social policies. Uh, I. Uh, Joined this uh, forum, you know, where you could talk about politics and shit, in uh, around 2010, it was four years ago, uh, almost to this day, uh, where I met this uh, Russian minarchist who, uh, you know, taught me a lot about uh, economical liberty and what uh, it could do to you know, improve the world. Uh, so he sort of slingshot me, you know, to libertarianism. Which I wasn't really, uh, I didn't know a lot about libertarianism back then. It wasn't a, It's not a big movement in Norway. But uh, after becoming a minarchist, I was like a minarchist for <laughs> not many days to say it like that. I was probably a minarchist for uh, a week or so when I thought, why is uh, <laughs> why should the state uh, stay out of matters that uh, like food or water or roads? These are very important things, and uh, you know the market can provide them better. Why can't the market provide uh, law, police, or military? Not that, not that police or military is you know directly necessary in society, at least not to that degree. But why shouldn't the market provide these uh, things instead of uh, the state? Uh, so I very quickly moved from anarchism to you know anarchism. Anarcho-capitalism, and um, I was uh, able to drag the Russian guy with me. He's probably not gonna give me all the credit for it, of course. That's not true, but um, yeah. Uh, so that's how I became an anarchist. I grew up in a, you know, not very religious household, but. Uh, my mother being socialist, she also was relatively Christian active, at least when I was young. Uh, you know, uh, she was a Lutheran, but with uh, high respect for uh, the Catholic Church. Growing up in Australia, she uh, uh, was friends with uh, the Eastern European children <laughs> in the class because they were segregated from the Anglo Saxons. So she uh, is also uh, highly regarding of the Catholic Church. So I grew up in a socialist religious household. I can't say I'm very religious, but uh, I'm definitely not an atheist. I generally don't care about religion at all, but I don't see why I should take a direct stance on God's existence or non-existence. So I view active atheists as uh, maybe a bit hypocritical. If they're, you know, actively criticizing Christians for thinking there's a God while 
being 100% sure of uh, the existence of uh, no gods. Well, so I usually just call myself an agnostic, agnostic with uh, some interest in some religious philosophies. I uh, enjoy debating religion, which you know, I'll welcome on my show as well. Although it's not uh, really a non-aggression principle uh, concept or a voluntarist, you know, concept. Uh, you should be able to be as religious or non-religious as you feel fit to be. So um, I will, uh, you know not really uh, promote this show being about religion, but uh, I'll take up the religious, uh, you know, uh, the religious uh, discussions if, uh, you know, they feel valuable to discuss. <coughs> so my ideological principles. Well, I'm an anarchist. Uh, I wouldn't really call myself, well, I, I would call myself an anarcho-capitalist, I guess, but I wouldn't put too much emphasis on the capitalist part of it. I mean, why uh, that sort of makes it seem like you have to be a capitalist in the anarchist system. And of course, why should you be? You should be able to, uh, you know, live in a socialist lifestyle, individualist lifestyle, capitalist lifestyle, fascist lifestyle. Of course, it should all be voluntary. So, uh, yeah. That's basically why I'm, I found being called a voluntarist might be better. I could also call myself an individual anarchist, I suppose, seeing as uh, the individual should uh, itself decide if they want to live a socialistic or capitalistic, whatever. And, uh, you know, uh, I'd call myself an agorist as well. Uh, I think agorism could be a great way to end the state, so to speak, uh, at least in the future. There's not really enough um, uh, ideologically libertarians in the world to uh, end the state now with agorism, but it's a start. Uh, I'd say that's the best way to end the state, so uh, I'd say agorism is the best. Uh, ending the state system. Uh, while, you know, I'd, I'd like to also see people just simply becoming anar anarchists and just saying no to the state and just letting the state dismantle itself by no, no one participating in it uh, because of their morals, I can't really see that happening. So um, that's, uh, that's my problems maybe, that's one of my problems with uh, let's say Molnay's stance on the issue want to sort of make the children philosophically aware of uh, libertarianism uh, because well, it might work, but it'll take generations to work and I don't see why we shouldn't have uh, liberty in our lifetime I'd say that's the greatest uh, the greatest goal of all to see uh, liberty in our lifetime. So that's why I think agorism could work, or the Free State Project, seeing if uh, enough uh, anarchists would move to one area of the world and sort of take over. Uh, <laughs> by taking over, of course, I mean leaving people shit alone, not fucking killing or murder, murdering people just for simply smoking weed or you know selling furniture without paying taxes you know there's uh, absolutely no reason to do that I find it immoral so I probably always been libertarian minded being a rugged individualist so to speak well at least uh, fuck people that try to interfere with your life at least even though I started out as a socialist or social democrat or whatever that was just <laughs> the stupid child that I was years ago probably a decade uh, so pretty young I'm uh, by the way I'm 
I got uh, summer vacation right now, starting uh, university next year. Probably social economics. Wow, what a shocker! An anarcho capitalist or whatever studying economics is a real shocker. I know. Uh, I might not get in. Who knows? Just then, I'm probably start history. But that's interesting too as well. So uh, yeah. Uh, what will my show be about? That's a good question. I had to think about it. You know, I had to think about it for a long time. What would my show be about? And uh, I thought maybe the general idea would me discussing uh, European news from an anarchist perspective. Because, as I talked about earlier, uh, libertarianism and anarchism is not that big in Europe as it is in the US, especially not in Norway. The Norwegian Libertarian Party got uh, 900 votes out of 2.8 million votes the last election. And they're not even real libertarians, they're uh, uh, violent objectivists supporting bombings in Iraq and you know, wiretappings and uh, militant atheism in <laughs> the worst uh, way imaginable basically for a libertarian way so it's not a very big uh, movement but I think we should try to expand it and that's why I'll try to do European news so for example I'll discuss things like the uh, Ukrainian crisis the almost civil war in Ukraine or corruption in the UK try to reach to issues like that in uh, uh, in Europe and you know some some Norwegian stuff too but I'll try to take more important uh, important issues because there's not there's not much happening in Norway really but I'll grab on to some different things I'll uh, also try to have some discussions or debates with people uh, for my first real show where I'm now that I'm when I'm done introducing myself I will try to get some anarchists I know from uh, Canada and the US uh, on my show and uh, we'll try to discuss some important issues uh, important libertarian issues so we'll, I'll try to have some debates as well uh, I'm not sure how big a part uh, European news is going to be uh, and how big uh, the debates are going to be uh, as a part of the show but I'll try to mix it up a bit try to have some different uh, stuff every time and uh, maybe I'll try to get some uh, <coughs> statists <laughs> on the show as well to debate with them and see uh, what they think on maybe the movement and uh, RIDs and you know try to basically stop them from being violent shit faces <laughs> you know that's a, that's a big part of the movement just uh, try to stop other people from being dicks no uh, the so long they'll just leave us alone I think uh, everything will be a lot better but of course they don't want to they want to you know destroy us they want to kill us for uh, basically uh, just allowing people to be themselves, be the individual they want to be. And that's what we want to stop, right? So I think uh, debating with the uh, status is uh, an important part. Uh, you know, uh, trying to convert people <laughs> to freedom, which is pretty hard. I've had my experiences. I probably, I've been able to make some people more. Uh, uh, libertarian like uh, this guy in the background I made him into an anarchist he's sitting here drawing as you can see I was kind of an anarchist but somebody made me uh, realize that in myself so uh, yeah so I'm a nice guy. <laughs> yeah as you heard I'm a nice guy <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, well, of course, anarchist and nice guy is basically the same thing. Unless we're talking about uh, collectivist anarchists. Don't yeah. let me get started. One of my biggest issues with uh, collectivist anarchists is the fact that they're glorifying violence. I mean, <laughs> you don't have to that go... That's real anarchism. If they deny the non-aggression principle, that's not anarchism. Yeah, as, uh, as Oscar is saying, if you're breaching non-aggression principle or, you know, aggressing against other people that's not uh, doing violent activities, you shouldn't be able to call yourself an anarchist. As the Dutch anarcho-pacifist Bart D. Licht said, uh, anarchist, uh, or, yeah, anarchism is uh, peaceful interaction and uh, violence is hierarchy and uh, statism. So, if you're an anarcho collectivist and you're uh, sort of, uh, I don't know, breaking into a <laughs> shop and destroying windows or whatever, you're, uh, <coughs> you're a statist. You're using violence to uh, aggress against other people. And you're a statist. So, uh, I have no respect for, mm, I don't know, the front runners of the collectivist anarchist movement. But of course, I would assume most of them, uh, maybe not being voluntarists, but at least uh, supporting voluntary socialism, as far as I've understood it. And of course, they're basically just voluntarists, because a voluntary socialist could never uh, force someone to live in a socialist way. They wouldn't. So it's basically a voluntarism, just like an anarcho-capitalist, or voluntarist wouldn't... Um, want to aggress against the socialist for starting a socialist commune or uh, just uh, being uh, in a cooperative so I would say uh, that working with uh, anarcho collectivists is sort of dangerous seeing as how they're pro portrayed as violent and Let's just face it, most of them are pretty violent as well. I say dangerous to cooperate to them, and uh, we probably shouldn't do it either. Because, uh, you know, the <laughs> they support statism as long as statism exists. You know, they, they want higher minimum wages, not seeing how it uh, is coercive against peaceful people. Or, you know, other, you know, statist activities that will protect the common man. But, of course, uh, laws can't protect the common man. Because, whether in a democracy or dictatorship, it's not the common man that decides what the laws is. It's the state or the, you know, financial elite that is cooperating with the state, the co cooperatists. So, no matter what. Uh, laws are made. They'll always be good for the rich political elite, and bad for the poor and the middle classes, and <laughs> probably the rich people as well. It's just the ultra lit, ultra rich people and the politici politicians that gain something from laws in general. Uh, yeah. So how would uh, I got asked before I got on the show? By a friend of mine or acquaintance, how would an anarchist uh, society work? And that is a good question. The problem is that I don't know because the fuck if I know what people want to do. So I don't aggress against other people. I don't care. I really do not care so long as they're not violent fucks. Uh, the society, of course, would be much more decentralized and uh, I think we would see uh, a lot more social mobility seeing as how the state can no longer hold people down by regulations or subsidizes to the already wealthy uh, this is of course a great thing it means uh, it's easier for poor people to get a better life and of course not be held down by taxes or the police or regulations 
Uh, now, the Norwegian state is not particularly racist against the people that are already citizens. But the American state is very racist when you look at uh, the court system, how black people are misproportionately being sent to prison. And I don't think you see as much racism at all, because most people are not racist. And since, since people are the market, uh, the market would not be racist. Uh, and it of course would also be great. I I believe in equality for women and all that. I I'm strongly against homophobia, racism, sexism, all that. And I absolutely do not think that the state in any way can address these issues, seeing as the dominant elite of any country will be either of a specific gender, specific race specific religion, whatever, and these are issues that normal people, people like me, people like you, I assume most people watching aren't the vice president or whatever, uh, we'll be a lot better at uh, addressing issues like this than uh, the state. So. Uh, I believe a society without a government would be a lot more equal, a lot, a lot less violent. I mean, Jesus Christ would have would have ridiculously less wars, ridiculously less. I mean, Jesus, all almost all wars are started by the state. You have all these uh, statists, you know, a mix of statists. And atheists that uh, you know believe religion is the cause of wars, which of course is wrong. It's not a religion; it's a power-hungry state. In basically all all wars, religion is just a pawn in a puzzle to conquer territory, to get money, to get more power. So. These are issues that we're dealing with. Rampant racism, rampant warmongering. These are not issues that are just American. You have them everywhere. And that's why I believe <laughs> all people in all countries should be uh, libertarians. Or if not libertarians, at least ideologically aligned to letting other people decide how the fuck they want to live their life and uh, that's why I also think it's important to come with perspectives to stuff or issues that Norwe no, not Nor well, Norwegians and Europeans will uh, you know find uh, important because that's what they're living in I mean important uh, issues in Americas are being addressed very well by the American libertarian movement but I can't say it's a big movement uh, in Europe. You have some electoral victories in the former uh, S uh, S uh, Soviet bloc, or you know, Slovakia and Czech Republic and Poland. You have some electoral victories for mild libertarian parties, but uh, they're ma they're mainly populist, not very. Uh, they're not radical. I mean, we need radical libertarianism to become more mainstream in Europe. I think it's a very important part of what I'm trying to do. I'm very I'm very excited that uh, Michael Shanklin has uh, asked if I want to do the show. And this is some of the reasons, you know, spreading the word basically like a Jehovah's Witness except not an asshole. So, uh, yeah, I said it's very important. And uh, so, yeah, next week I'll try to get a hold of some libertarians from Canada and the US. And uh, we'll discuss some issues. And I'm very thankful for being on this show. And, uh, yeah.
And it seems Oscar has painted something. I don't know what it is. So yeah, I hope you will enjoy it. Uh yeah, that's nice. Thunder is on air. I like that. Uh yeah. I'll be back next week, Thursday, 2 p.m. East Central Time, I believe. I am not uh, quite accustomed to, you know, American time zones yet. I'll probably be in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sondra out.